Can this car make electric motorsport cool? Because I'm sorry, but electric motorsport is rubbish. I know some of the cars in of themselves are quite interesting pieces of engineering, but something about racing them just hasn't captured the public's consciousness. Whether it's Formula E, Extreme E, the uh, Jaguar I-Pace E trophy thing, there's been a couple of cool electric Pikes Peak specials, but I haven't been truly entertained by electric racing since I last played with Scale Electric. But those crazy kids at Hyundai think they can succeed where everyone else has failed with this. Welcome to the EN1 Cup Car. And no, I'm not just going to talk you around it, I'm going to drive it. Yes, this is a track only racing version of that, the road going Ionic 5N, which is probably the most entertaining EV to drive in the world. The road car makes lots of noise, it revs, it drifts, and you can pretend to change gear if you like by fusing the sensations of the old petrol powered world with the pace and the response of the new electric order, Hyundai made something that was fun. Your brain knows it's all fake, it's augmented cosplay, but your heart just doesn't care. But to achieve true performance car greatness, it could use a bit of motor racing pedigree. This isn't some kind of silhouette racer which only shares the headlights with the streetcar. This is nine tenths of an Ionic 5 N. It's got the same basic body, though they've added aero bits, as you can see. It's 160 mil wider. Um, and obviously there's a lot of aero as well. You've got this new front splitter, the flicks, nostrils here, of course, proper racing hood pins. But underneath, it is just like the Ionic 5N from the showroom. Same battery, same dual motors, same 650 horsepower. And as you can see, there's not much left of the Ionic's loungy interior. Lightweight polycarbonate windows at the side and at the back. Uh, the wheels, they're seriously downsized. Instead of those rather fussy 21s, these look much cooler, don't they? 18s wrapped in slick tires and the brakes are a big upgrade. Six piston AP racing calipers up front, four pistons at the rear, and yet the discs are not ceramic, they're steel, because this has got to be an affordable racing car. Because it's been stripped out, it weighs a quarter of a ton less than the street car. But 1,970 kilos is still a lot for a racing car. I should explain that this isn't just gonna be some marketing support series for Drive to Survive. Hyundai is dipping its toe into the waters of electric racing with a proper one make championship kicking off later this year. It's a sort of 10 event fact finding mission to discover how the cars behave in combat, what's the best charging strategy and how to make the cars as safe as possible. Speaking of fact finding missions, the time has come to don the obligatory very silly helmet and uh, go for a drive. Aha. Okay, now as you are well aware, I am not a racing driver, but I do have all of the racing driver excuses, which are today, I've no idea where this crazy track goes. We don't have time to learn it. Uh, it's pissing with rain and the tires are stone cold. So uh, let's try and not fire it into a barrier. Mind you, actually, this might be famous last words, but just did a few laps for uh, doing some shots just now. And this is a properly tightened together little racing car, this. Nauseatingly fast in a straight line. The steering's way quicker and more sensitive than the street car, obviously. And the brakes are really impressive, very, very strong. It will generate 0.6 G of braking while still regening power back into the battery, which is really clever. I mean, ultimately it's not as fun as the street car because that is a car that's built to muck about. This is a racing car, it's for grip, it's for going quickly, it doesn't have a drift mode. Why in a racing car would you pull paddles and activate a fake gearbox? That's just going to slow you down but after all it's a race car, 
the fun in a racing car comes from there being 19 other lunatics in identical cars chasing you around. So this red button on the steering wheel, that's my boost function. That gives me a sort of over boost, extra power. It's a push to pass button, helps you overtake. But you can only use it, they're saying, maybe four or five times in a race and certainly only once a lap. So that brings tactics into play, doesn't it? Do you use it straight off the line? Do you save all your boost until five laps before the end and then try and overtake everyone right as you get to the line? And then because these things are gonna be connected wirelessly to race control back in the pits, they can punish you if you're being unsportsmanlike. So if you exceed track limits or if you bash into someone, they can artificially limit your motors, restrict your horsepower. I mean, why isn't that in Formula One already? So the clever thing about the EM1 is all of the ideas for it that they've nicked from gaming. So to start off with, the noise, unfortunately not working in this prototype, but like the streetcar having all that fake engine noise, which is actually really helpful when you're driving fast on track, this is gonna have even more noise, gonna be even louder. So you're gonna have something to hear if you come to watch a race. And the teams who buy these things, well, they're gonna be able to choose what kind of noise it makes. But the most important thing, I reckon, about the EM1 is the price. They say, they promise this car, this fully race-ready, stick-it-up, slick-shod racing car will be less than 100,000 euros. I mean, that is, for a race car, a complete bargain. Even Hyundai's own Elantra touring car is 140 grand, and that needs race fuel and expensive spares for its engine and its gearbox. This doesn't need any of that. And of course, you can just charge it up by plugging it into any old wall. That alone means that, well, starting off in Korea, but maybe all over the world, if they could actually get a championship full of other manufacturers together, some young people who might otherwise not have had the resources, not have had the opportunity to become racing drivers, might get to live out their dreams of taking to the track because of electric racing cars. So there you go, there's a reason to get behind it if nothing else. Probably too late for me though. Anyway, the rain's just about easing up. I have 23% of my battery left. So while you like and please subscribe to the Top Gear YouTube channel, I'm gonna enjoy a few more eco guilt-free laps.